Potassium. Now let's look at potassium. Potassium is the predominant cation in the intracellular fluid. The normal range of potassium is between 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter, depending on your facility. It has a reciprocal action with sodium. It is a vital electrolyte for skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle activity. This electrolyte must be ingested daily because your body cannot conserve it. So what happens when the potassium is out of balance? Hypokalemia. Hypokalemia, or potassium deficit, is a serum potassium level which is lower than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. Causes. This can be caused by abnormal GI losses such as vomiting, nasogastric tube suctioning, diarrhea, and inappropriate laxative use. It can also be caused by renal losses, excretion of diuretics, excessive use of diuretics such as furosemide, also excessive use of corticosteroids, and it can also be caused by inadequate dietary intake. Also, prolonged administration of non-electrolyte containing IV solutions can also cause it. Intracellular shift can also be a cause. This happens in cases like metabolic alkalosis after correcting acidotic periods due to tissue repair, such as burns, trauma, and starvation, and total parental nutrition. Clinical manifestations. Clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms can include muscle weakness, leg cramps, fatigue, lethargy, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, decreased bowel sounds and decreased bowel motility, cardiac dysrhythmias, depressed deep tendon reflexes, weak irregular pulse. Laboratory findings will show a serum potassium that is lower than 3.5, and arterial blood gases may show alkalosis. T wave flattening and ST segment depression can also be seen on the ECG. Nursing management. Nurses want to monitor the heart rate and rhythm. They also want to monitor clients receiving digitalis or digoxin closely because hypokalemia increases the risk of digitalis toxicity. Nurses want to administer oral potassium as ordered with food or fluid to prevent gastric irritation. Administer IV potassium solutions at a rate no faster than 10 to 20 milliequivalents per liter. Potassium is never given undiluted. For patients receiving potassium, monitor for and plan for inflammation at the injection site, which is known as phlebitis. The solution may have to be even more diluted or run at a slower rate. Nurses also want to teach their clients about potassium-rich foods. Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia is movement of potassium out of the cells. Causes. This can be caused by increased total body potassium from IV potassium administration or ingestion of salt substitutes. Extracellular shift decreases insulin, acidosis, deep tissue catabolism, which can be caused by sepsis, trauma, surgery, or fever, or MI. Also, hypertonic states such as uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, decreased excretion of potassium such as in cases with renal failure, severe dehydration, and potassium sparing diuretics can also cause it. NSAIDs can also increase the risk and adrenal insufficiency. Clinical manifestations. Clinical manifestations can include gastrointestinal hyperactivity, diarrhea, irritability, apathy, and confusion. It can also include cardiac dysrhythmias or arrest and muscle weakness. It can also cause a decreased heart rate, irregular pulse, paresthesia, which is numbness in the extremities. Laboratory findings can include a serum potassium that is greater than five. You can also see peaked T waves and a widening QRS on the ECG. Nursing management. Nurses want to closely monitor the cardiac status and ECG. They want to administer diuretics and other medications such as glucose and insulin as ordered. Nurses should hold potassium supplements and contact their doctor if they are ordered. They should also monitor the potassium levels carefully because a rapid drop could occur as the potassium shifts into the cells. Nurses also want to teach their clients to avoid foods that are high in potassium and also avoid salt substitutes which are also high in potassium. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. The nurse is caring for a client that needs correction for hypokalemia. Which of the following nursing interventions are incorrect? 
A, informing the physician when the urine output is 15 milliliters, then 18 milliliters for two consecutive hours. B, noting for impaired renal function. C, taking blood samples for repeat potassium determination on the arm with an IV infusion. Or D, preparing potassium for IV push administration. Looking at these answer options, Option A, informing the physician when the urine output is 15 milliliters then 18 milliliters for two consecutive hours, Lasix can potentially cause kidney damage and low urine output can be a sign of that. Anytime the urine output is less than 30 milliliters per hour, it is considered at risk and the physician should be notified. So this answer option would be correct. In option B, Noting for impaired renal function, this is similar to the previous option and of course also makes sense. It is important to make sure your patient's renal function is okay, especially when you are administering medications intravenously. In option C, taking blood samples for a repeat potassium determination on the arm without an IV infusion would also be correct. Because if you draw the sample on the same arm that the potassium is infusing on, you can get a false reading. However, option D, preparing potassium for IV push administration, potassium is never administered IV push or intramuscularly. IV potassium must be administered using an infusion pump. Potassium given IV can be deadly, and it is really important for nurses to remember this. Question number two. The nurse was about to give 10 units of regular insulin IV along with 50 milliliters of dextrose 50% for a client diagnosed with acute renal failure. The nurse understands that this medication is intended to correct which electrolyte imbalance that the client is most likely experiencing. Option A, hyperkalemia. Option B, hyperglycemia. Option C, hypernatremia or D, hypercalcemia. This question is forcing you to recognize medical terms concerning electrolyte abnormalities. Since this question is not giving us exact values, it is asking us to recognize why these medications are normally given. In kidney failure, the potassium level in the blood may increase because of the loss of ability of the kidneys to excrete the extra potassium out of the body. Regular insulin given intravenously with 50 milliliters of dextrose 50% also given intravenously helps shift the potassium from the extracellular fluid into the cell, which can normalize serum potassium levels in a client with hyperkalemia. If you look at the other answer options, option B, hyperglycemia, this means high blood sugar. In cases of high blood sugar, you would not want to give dextrose. This would cause the sugar levels to get even higher. So this answer option could not be correct. Also in option C, hypernatremia means elevated sodium levels. And finally option D, hypercalcemia means elevated calcium levels, which this medication therapy is not a treatment for. Making the correct and final answer option A. In the next video, we're going to go over the electrolyte calcium.